Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Hurry Brothers Incorporated. My name is Rick McBride. I'm the president and CEO and owner of Hurry Brothers Incorporated. First, I'd like to acknowledge and thank my wife of 27 years, Diane McBride, my son Jason McBride and my daughter Ashley McBride, who uh, have put up with the trials and tribulations of being a business owner where you end up having to wear your work hat 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I next would like to acknowledge and thank all of our dedicated employees who stand behind me, who without them we would not be here today. Thank you to all of you for your dedication to Hurry Brothers Incorporated. Now, not being a public speaker, I have written a short statement about why we are here today and what it means to the McBride family along with all of its employees. I'm here today to share with you why we have to elect Pat Toomey to the U.S. Senate so that we can, can repeal the death tax and save the American dream. Hurry Brothers Incorporated was founded by the namesake Hurry Brothers. They established the company in their father's barn in 1913. Over the next 60 years, the company grew and provided jobs to many people in not only the Harrisburg area, but Enola, Pennsylvania. However, in the late 1970s, the company began to run into trouble. The owners had taken on too much debt and were engaged in unprofitable enterprises. The company teetered on collapse. It was at that moment that my father, William B. McBride, Jr., and two other employees banded together to buy this company. They believed that the company still had promise and were committed to making it work. My father took the company back to its basics and focused on making it profitable again. It wasn't easy, and there were many times where he could have sold his stake, left the company to dwindle, but my father wasn't that type of a man. Slowly but surely, he rebuilt the company, such as today, and now employs over 100 workers. Before the economic crash, we employed close to 250 employees, and I look forward to reaching and exceeding that number in the future. That is, if the company is not sold due to the heavy death, death tax liability. You see, the very hard work that saved the company from collapsing also created a large estate tax liability. When I die, my children will inherit a company that on paper is worth millions and millions of dollars. Look at this machinery, which alone is worth a few million dollars. Add in the property, inventory, vehicles, and you have quite an expensive company. Yet, our cash reserves are hardly a fraction of this value. This means it will be very difficult for my children to pay a 55% or even a 45% estate tax without selling assets. When the tax man demands his payment, he doesn't give a write-off for the guts of this business. If my children were forced to pay an estate tax next year when the tax returns to 55%, it almost certainly will be that we'd be forced to sell the entire company. It simply isn't possible to keep a company profitable when half or more of its assets are confiscated. With the company would go the hundred jobs we provide and the hundreds more we would like to provide. With the jobs would go the economic opportunity that we provide to our town here in Hampton Township of 26,000 residents. If you want to know what's happening to Main Street in small town America, the death tax is a great place to start. It turns out that my story is not so unique. Across America, an average of 6,000 small businesses are destroyed or sold to larger corporations each year to pay the estate tax liability. This is according to the research published by the American Family Business Foundation. It should come as no surprise that when small businesses disappear, small towns are eroded. Even if the estate tax does not force the company's sale, it discourages future generations from taking part in family businesses. What is the point of investing your life in a multi-generational enterprise if you are unlikely to be able to pass it on to the next generation? Those are the questions that my children are asking today. I hope as they have chosen to work in this company that they will take my father's work ethic and innovative vision and expand beyond his wildest dreams. It's for this reason that I'm doing everything I can to minimize the company estate tax exposure. I've spent untold sums on life insurance policies and tax planning attorneys, all in hopes of passing a viable business on to my children. Yet, this process is far from guaranteed, and it comes at a cost of valuable expense. The funds I bleed for life insurance and attorney's fees would be better spent on new equipment and hiring new employees to operate it. I'd rather offer more services to more clients, more jobs to more workers, and more opportunity to more Pennsylvanians, rather than giving more paper to more attorneys. That's why I want to honest representation in Congress. 
I want a principled senator who understands the value of small business to his home state and to the nation. Pat Toomey has come here today to publicly commit to supporting permanent death tax repeal. With Toomey as our future senator, I have hopes that the Congress will finally and completely repeal the death tax. Thank you very much for your time. I now would like to introduce Mr. Dick Patton, the president of the American Family Business Institute. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Rick, thank you so much. Again, my name is Dick Patton. I'm the president of the American Family Business Institute. Uh, it's my great joy to represent uh, owners of family businesses from sea to shining sea in this great nation. And let me also welcome you to this historic day, day number 263 of no death taxes. That, of course, is the good news. The bad news is that in a mere 102 days, the death tax goes from zero, of course, the lowest death tax on the planet, to 55%, the highest death tax on the planet. The death tax, in terms of the government itself, is a great loser. Uh, we have a former Treasury economist who has estimated that for every $1 the government collects in death taxes, it actually, in reality, loses $2. The death tax, for no other reason, should be killed, but the greatest reason of all is that the death tax is the great barrier to the survival of America's family businesses. Uh, in all of America, and right here in Pennsylvania, 57% of all the jobs in America come from America's family businesses. And I think we all know that, that we have not only an economic crisis in America, but we have a very significant jobs crisis. Uh, Dr. Douglas Holseegan, the former director of the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, uh, has recently published a paper showing that if we got rid of the estate tax permanently, it would add 1.5 million jobs to the American economy. Now, this is a very, very serious issue. That's not just jobs, that's families who have paychecks that don't have paychecks at this moment in time. And I think we all know that this is our greatest desire for the American economy is that we get back onto a path where jobs are being created and families are becoming uh, independent once again. Here, here in Pennsylvania, by the way, getting rid of the death tax means liter literally tens of thousands of jobs added to this great state as well. And so why don't we do it? Well, in the death tax, I would like to propose this idea to you, that of all the issues around the death tax, and we can talk about federal revenue, we can talk about family businesses, we can talk about jobs, but the death tax issue comes down to this basic question, which I ask you to contemplate. Do we actually have property rights, or are we merely tax-paying serfs that somehow, when our heart stops beating, our property reverts to the government, our businesses revert to the government, as if the government somehow owned it all to begin with. That's the basic question. The death tax is what happens when the government stops concentrating on what is good for its citizens, its economy, its jobs, and even its own income, and begins simply being focused on feeding itself from whatever source of revenue it can scrounge up from, even if it means destroying family businesses and destroying families' jobs. So let me leave you with this word of advice, no taxation without respiration. Um, Pat Toomey, um, 480 senatorial and congressional candidates have signed the death tax repeal pledge. Would you do us the honor of being the 481st candidate to sign it? Well, Dick, you know I've supported this in the past. I support it now, and I'll support the repeal in the future. I'll be happy to sign the pledge. Let's do it, please. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. You're all witness. Okay. podium is yours. Th thank you very much. Uh, uh, first, let me uh, thank our host, Rick. Thank you very much for uh, 
opening up your business and uh, welcoming us here. Dick, thank you for the very important work you're doing all across the country Absolutely. to try to ensure the repeal of this terribly unfair and counterproductive tax. Um, it's always a pleasure for me to be with a, a small business family, a family-owned business. This is a bigger business than the little business that my brothers and I started from scratch and owned and operated. But as a former small business owner, I understand very well what it takes to make a business succeed. And I understand the threats that can destroy business as well. And the death tax is one of them. Uh, fundamentally, the death tax is about jobs. It prevents us from having as many jobs as we could have. And it makes it much more difficult to have the economic recovery that we should be having. Dick mentioned some of the statistics. It's uh, well known and widely acknowledged, including by the economist Douglas Holtz Eakin, that the death tax right now as we speak is lowering the total employment in America by a good one and a half million jobs. We could have that many more jobs across America if we didn't have this looming threat that is uh, right around the corner. In Pennsylvania alone, that's worth over 64,000 jobs. If nothing has changed in 2011, when this tax is scheduled to go back up to the sky-high rate of 55 percent, that could cost us 21,000 jobs just within a matter of months. There's really three ways, as, as I can tell, that uh, the death tax destroys jobs. The first is the obvious when businesses get destroyed entirely because they have to be liquidated in order to pay the death tax. That is one certain way that jobs get destroyed. A second is jobs get destroyed even among those businesses that aren't themselves destroyed, but sometimes they have to take on a massive amount of debt in order to pay the death tax, and that borrowing and the interest expense of servicing that debt prevents them from hiring new workers, expanding and creating the kind of jobs that they would otherwise create. A third way in which the death tax destroys jobs is through the enormous insurance premiums that people pay so that the insurance will be there upon the occasion of their death. And let's be clear, um, when we buy insurance against a very unlikely event, like say an earthquake, premium is quite small because the risk of that event occurring is quite small. The risk of a business owner dying, well that's about 100 percent. It's only a matter of when. And so the insurance premium is really just pre-funding the death tax obligation. It is in no way an avoidance. It's simply paying for it over time beforehand, and all of those resources could otherwise go to expanding the business and creating more jobs. Instead, they go to essentially pre-funding the death tax. As Dick mentioned, it's actually quite poor as a revenue producer for the federal government. And for every dollar that the Treasury takes in from death taxes, considerably more than that dollar is spent in dealing with attorney's fees and accountants and the various insurance policies. I should point out that this tax hits very hard at Pennsylvania's single biggest industry, which is agriculture. Um, most farms in Pennsylvania are family-owned farms. And just as so many small businesses like this one have substantial assets but not huge reserves of cash, well, that very well describes most family farms, which have considerable value in their land but typically very little cash. And if a death tax comes along and confiscates half of the value of that farm, very common, it's very common that there's only one way to deal with that, and that is to sell the farm, to generate the cash to pay the tax. Uh, this, is, uh, this is not good for our economy. This is not good for Pennsylvania. This is not good for our future. Unfortunately, Congressman Joe Sestak says that he supports small business, but he has repeatedly opposed repealing the death tax. He supports a death tax, and uh, I think this is a big mistake. I'm honored to be here today. Uh, as I mentioned to Dick, I have long been a believer that uh, the death tax is an unfair tax. It's an additional layer of tax. Let's bear in mind that people pay tax all their life on their income, and the savings that one accumulates is after-tax savings, and to tax it yet again upon the occasion of a person's death strikes me as unfair as well as counterproductive. So it's a pleasure for me to be here with this uh, family business. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with Dick and the work that he does. And I will continue to advocate complete and permanent repeal of this unfair tax. Thank you very much.